You know, in 1936, the Union Pacific Railroad opened up Sun Valley to the world. It was the first four-season resort in North America. The reason people moved here is because of where we live. It's in the mountains, it's beautiful. I think that central Idaho is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I started volunteering because I've always been interested in the emergency medical aspect of it, and the fire stuff sort of goes hand in hand. Yeah, actually, the way that, it, that the conference started seemed to be at a restaurant here in Ketchum when I was having dinner with Rick Moore, Dr. Rick Moore. The goal was then to provide education and support and enhance training to uh, that group of people, and hence the Ski and Mountain Trauma Conference got started. Is anybody injured in here that can go Hold the pressure on it, keep adding dressing. One, two, three. 38, 39, 40. One, two, three, up. Could you give us a number of patients? We try to make things as realistic as possible. We try to use scenarios that have actually happened in the backcountry. Push the air out of the bulb syringe, suction the mouth. This is Noah, he's our simulated patient today. This conference could not have been put on without Lou Whitaker. Now, the people that benefit from this uh, trauma conference are a wide scope and it's the largest in the United States. The Ski and Mountain Trauma Conference is very important to our community, but not just to our local community, to the community of first responders as a whole. What we've tried to do is put together a conference for the paramedics that would meet their educational needs, plus also show them the newest things that are coming out, but also allow them hands-on simulator training that they wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Crank them up tighter. It's not going to be comfortable. It's but it's going to save her life from the bleeding out of her pelvis. <laughs> Not only are they directly helping the firefighters and EMS workers, both full-time and volunteer, they're helping the community in itself. Being from Garden Valley Fire Protection District and that we're an hour and 15 minutes away from the closest trauma center in Boise. It, it's awesome to be here and to be able to learn as much as we can so that we can be um, the best we can for our patients that need us. We didn't have a ton of tourniquets, so if you don't simulate with an ACE bandage, if you don't have a halo seal, use an electrode. Because we are in the National Guard, we also have a strong civilian focus, and it's great to know how civilian works, and it's great to know how we can better integrate with them. Okay, hold the pressure right there. It's can you so walk? Bleeding. Can you throw that height on top of it. I cannot overemphasize how crucial it is to get hands on. That's what you fall back on on any situation, like especially if it's a situation you only come across once a year or twice a year, intubation, stuff like that, you don't do that all the time. Open my eyes up on the things that we can do, being it little or big, to increase patient outcome. Each and every one of us at some point in time in our life, either ourselves or our family, is going to be put into a predicament where we need the help. And those first responders that are on the scene, that actually um, stabilize patients and help in the issue of, of transport, make such a big difference in the outcome. Those dollars that are donated will directly benefit the patients that are responded to in the future. So every dollar goes much farther. It's a mix of the experts who are learning from each other. Palm grip, clamp. Can you get a set of vitals? Nice. We're trying to do this hands-on work with them so that they can, when they come across these difficulties in the field, they can manage them. So we get a backboard ready and the next pause. Real thankful to St. Dallas for putting it on. It's, it's super. I look forward to it every year. The environment around here, where they have it, the way they treat us, um, it is phenomenal.